Oh
shall we begin? I want to call your attention, first of all, to the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 18, beginning at verse 1. It reads like this. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men are always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, And shall not God avenge his own elect, Which cry day and night unto him? Though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, Shall he find faith on the earth? I want to read another passage to you found in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 15. Read like this. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away. But she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, Is it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs? And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. I want to use for a thought today the power of persistent prayer. The power of persistence. The power of persistence. We have been focusing on prayer much this entire year. And you can see from the scriptures that I've read today, the Gospel of St. Luke and the Gospel of St. Matthew, about two women who were determined to get what it was that they wanted. Sort of reminds me a little bit of marriage, but that's a whole different subject for today. Those women being persistent, they saw the mercy of God and the hand of God because they failed to quit. What keeps you from the promises of God? What keeps you from achieving your goal, your desire in life? Is it prayer? Is it your lack of persistence and the power of prayer? What is it that's holding you back? As we think about things that win because of their persistence, I think of a blade of grass, how a blade of grass can come up through cement. And I'm always wondering how in my mind did that blade of grass come up in the middle, in the midst of cement. But 
Nobody told a blade of grass you're not supposed to grow here. I also think about water, how water can actually drop off of your roots onto a spot in the cement on the ground. And over time, that, that actual water, as soft as it is, will begin to roll a spot into the cement on the ground. Water is such a powerful thing. And I believe it is the Lord Jesus who says, I will be in you, a well of water springing up in the everlasting life. You and God can do anything. I think about over time when it was Hank Aaron, just about ready to break Babe Ruth's record. He started getting all these phone calls and threats. If you hit that ball, I'm going to kill your kid. If you hit that ball, I'm going to shoot you while you're at the, at the plate. And you ask Hank Aaron, what made you hit that ball? He'll, he'll tell you what it was. It was pressure. It was resistance. You see, we need some resistance in our lives sometimes. Some of us are praying a lot more now that we got some pressure. Mm -hmm. Oh, pressure will teach you to pray. Yeah. Hallelujah thought about another young lady by the name of Wilma Rudolph. Before she was four years old, she had measles, she had mumps, and she had pneumonia. By the time she was about six or nine, she had polio. Her legs were so shriveled up, she could not even hardly walk. And they took her to the only clinic that would see her. They call them a colored clinic back in those days. She had to go some distance. But her family had to massage her legs every day. They put these braces on her and told her, you cannot walk. Do not try to walk. Don't go outside. Don't play with the other children. But every time her parents left the house, guess where Wilma was at? Oh, she was right out there with the kids. And this same young lady would make it to the Olympics and not win one medal, but three gold medals the same year. What helped her? It was persistence. What don't break you will make you. And if you will be persistent at whatever it is you're pursuing in life, God will make sure that you get there. I think about another man by the name of Ludwig Beethoven. I know you all know him. But Beethoven, by the time he was two, he began to go deaf. And by the time he was 40, he was totally deaf. Yet, he wrote some of the best music you ever heard, being deaf. How do you write when you can't hear what you're writing? But where there is a will, there is a way. I believe God wants us to learn how to be persistent in life. I heard about this man who wanted to be holy, he went and joined this monastery, this group, because they were supposed to be holy. This monastery was so strict, you could only say two words in a year. And he joined the monastery, and he had to work every day and say his prayers and do all those other things that were religiously tied to being a part of that monastery. And at the end of the first year, when he got a chance to say his um, two words, he said, bed hard, bed hard. And so he went back to work, working in the monastery, praying every day. When he got his chance to say his two words the next year, he said, food bad, food bad food bad. He went back to work praying and doing all of the things that was required of someone who works in a monastery as a monk. And he got a chance to say his two words that third year was, I quit. I quit. And, and we're looking at a generation like that today. People who won't be persistent. People will not, who will not fight for their dreams fight for what's right. 
fight for what it is they want out of life and certainly won't fight for what they need from God. They won't fight for it. They won't fight for it. We call that a cut and run society when you quit too soon. My pastor was in New York and he had rode the subway and when he got off the train he he, he looked and he saw these men lying on the ground on cardboard. It disturbed him so bad. He said to the Lord, Lord, what's wrong with these men? And the Lord said, they quit too soon. They quit too soon. You never ever know what you could do if you wouldn't quit so soon. I think about Helen Keller. She was deaf. And she became deaf. And being deaf and blind, she graduated with honors from Radcliffe College. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I'm going to just leave that alone. I ain't going to talk about our kids today. Amen. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. We need that resistance that we have in life. We need that pressure. A plane does not fly with the wind. A plane flies against the wind. You need that that pressure, you need that resistance in aerodynamics for a plane to get up off the ground. One of our sons here, Miguel, is going to school and studying to be a mechanic and, and he can tell you what it takes for a plane to get up off the ground. You need that resistance of wind underneath the wings to help that plane to fly in life, you're going to find out you need a little bit of resistance, need a little pressure sometimes. Hallelujah. You see, to achieve optimal strength, you just won't acquire it if you keep pressing the same weight. you got to have a little bit more added to it in order to be able to do what it is that God has called you to do. And sometimes you have things that we use, we call them dumbbells, amen, and, and sometimes I believe God uses them against us too, amen, but it's all right. The Bible says that Zechariah said, who are thou, O great mountain, who stand against the Zerubbabel? Who are you? Who are you? Every mountain will be lowered. Every valley shall become a plain if you stay with the Lord. Think about a young girl by the name of Shikari Richardson. I believe it was her mother or one of her relatives she lost. And, and though she qualified for the Olympics in 2020, uh, when she tested positive for marijuana, she was suspended for a year. A lot of people thought that would be the end of Shikari Richardson. Ah, but how many of you know she came back the next year. The Bible tells us that God gives power to the faint. Yes. And where you're weak, he'll make you strong. You just don't give up just because you've fallen. The Bible says a good man may fall seven times, but he keeps on getting back up. Who am I preaching to today? He gives power to the faint. And the Bible says if you Faint in the day of adversity, that just means that your strength is small. It doesn't mean that you're a failure. Amen. A failure is an event, but a failure is not who you are. You are more than a conqueror through him that loves you. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You can do all things through Christ who is strengthening you. So I'm encouraging you today to know it's not time to give up. Think about another young lady by the name of Simone Biles. Larry Nasser, that medical doctor who molested some hundred gymnasts and other athletes over three decades. He thought he ruined her when she stepped out of the Olympics. But I got word for him, she's back. This lady has won more medals, 37 medals, and she's back one more time. They call her the GOAT. 
Now, I, I got some brothers, I call them the goats, and I'm just having the fun. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But she's the real goat. Amen. I stopped by just to say these words to you as I close today. You may be just one prayer away from what it is you really want out of life. And so I encourage you to pray today. I encourage you not to give up. I encourage you to keep on doing what you're doing. Because God is the only one who can change whatever it is you're going through. The Bible says some men trust in horses, some men trust in chariots, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. You've got to remember God in everything that you're going through. And a, and a winner never quit, and a quitter never wins. Therefore, run this race with patience, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. I encourage you today to be persistent in prayer and never underestimate the power of persistence. Will you stand today?